go. All right. So just a reminder, we're going to be recording today's program. Um, so you'll be able to come back and view it, or um, if you have family who would be interested in seeing it who can't or can't join us right now, please, um, you'll be able to come back to our website. It's really critical to us to um, make sure that you understand your opportunities at Rutgers. So we do, we'll, we'll, what we're going to do is try to be uh, pithy. Um, we all could tell you a ton about all of our programs, but we're going to give you a quick overview from each of the areas and then open it up to questions. So please feel free to ask us all of your questions. We know one of the critical things is for you to get any questions answered and really understand what your opportunities are. We have both um, kind of faculty and staff from Rutgers and also some of our students, uh, our student ambassadors who have participated in a good number of the programs. So they're gonna be a great resource for you today. All right, so away we go. Um, I'm, um, I'm again, I'm Julie Traxler. I'm gonna give you kind of an overview or help uh, move things along. Our panelists today are coming from our Office of Financial Aid. Um, the SEBS Honors Program, our Honors College, uh, SEBS Scholarships, and our Hellier House, uh, which is a great on-campus collective uh, living community. Um, so let's jump in. I'll ask our panelists to give you a couple minute overview of their office, their program, and then again, um, we'll, they'll stay with us to answer some questions and help guide you um, through this, um, through the hour or 45 minutes we're together today. All right, so I'm going to ask um, Shiraz to, to step in, um, say hello. Um, we're really appreciative to have a member of the financial aid department with us today because we know he brings really important information that everyone is worried about in terms of paying for college. Yeah, thank you so much, Julie, and thank you everyone for being here. Um, as Julie said, I'm Shiraz Qureshi. I'm the assistant manager in the Office of Financial Aid uh, for the New Brunswick campus. So we kind of do financial aid for all students in all colleges in, in New Brunswick, undergrad and graduate. Um, and the main thing that I wanted to kind of tell you guys, if there's one thing um, to remember, it's to complete the FAFSA as soon as possible. Um, the 21-22 FAFSA, which is used, gonna be used for the upcoming fall semester, for the fall 21 semester, it's available to complete as of October 1st. So hopefully a lot of you guys have already done it. Um, but if you haven't, uh, it's critical that you do it as soon as possible because we do have a priority deadline which is December 1st. Um, and that deadline is really important because if you miss it, you're gonna lose out on possibly some institutional grants, which are grants from Rutgers um, and also federal work study and some other grants that are out there as well. So it's important that you, um, you know, if you haven't done so that you do your FAFSA as soon as possible and you can do it on fafsa.ed.gov or studentaid.gov, both links will take you there. Um, and you wanna do that as soon as possible. So. The FAFSA is for federal aid, um, for um, New Jersey residents. There's also HESA, which helps with your state aid. And once you complete the FAFSA starting you know, this year, um, HESA automatically gets your information. So you shouldn't have to do anything directly on the HESA website. Um, however, you wanna be on the lookout for emails from them because a lot of people aren't aware of HESA. Um, so if you do get any emails, um, you wanna you want answer them as soon as possible. Um, and as far as completing the FAFSA, some people are a little bit um, you know, overwhelmed by what the questions that they ask, specifically the financial questions about tax information. There's a very good tool called the IRS data retrieval tool, which is on the FAFSA. Most of you guys should be able to use that. And what that does is it transfers your information directly from the IRS website onto the FAFSA. So you don't have to manually enter anything. And that helps a lot because some FAFSAs are selected for federal verification. So it's gonna reduce the amount of documents that we may need to ask from you if you are selected for verification. Um, so that, that's important to do as well. Um, as far as eligibility requirements, um, one of the main ones is that you should be enrolled at least half time, um, which is uh, six credits for SEB students. Um, so as long as you are enrolled half time, you will get some financial aid. Um, if you're enrolled full time, you will get more, but your charges are more. So just keep that in mind. If you're below six credits, you're not gonna be eligible for financial aid. Um, and then there are some satisfactory academic progress or like um, SAP requirements. Um, those are hopefully none of you guys are in that situation, but I do want you to be aware that they're out there. The strictest the requirements get is you have to have maintain like a 2.0 GPA at the high end. So hopefully you guys, you know, won't be in that requirement, but if you are, um, you know, reach out to us and we'll let you know what you have to do to regain your eligibility. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Once you do your FAFSA, the next step is that you know we'll be sending financial aid offer letters in mid-February, letting you guys know how much you know financial aid you are eligible for. 
Um, so that's kind of it as far as an overview. Great, thanks so much. I know we'll have questions for you later. I will put in a plug as a parent of a college age student, the filling out the FAFSA with the data retrieval tool was much easier than I expected it to be. Not easy, but easier than certainly I know it could be. So hopefully everyone has that on their to-do list. All right, let's uh, jump along. Um, we're gonna hear next from our SEBS Honors Program. Um, Dr. David Tullock is a SEBS Honors Fellow, Professor of Landscape Architecture, and our incoming Honors Director. So for you, class of 2025, um, he would be your Honors Director. Dr. Tullock? Thanks, Julie. Thanks everyone for coming today. Yeah, the SCBS General Honors Program is a group of aspiring scholars that are surrounded with a supportive community of faculty and students that are here really to help you as a student progress along the academic path that you choose. Uh, because we're based in uh, historic Waller Hall, it's, oh, wrong hand, I can never do this, um, the building there, um, historic Waller Hall, um, we're on the Bucolic Cook Campus. It's, it's gonna be beautiful this afternoon when I go over there. Um, students have easy access to a remarkable range of laboratories and high-tech research facilities with the opportunity to work side-by-side -side with world-class faculty. And beyond that beautiful saying of the campus, our honor students love our unique campus because it just has so many uh, opportunities for hands-on learning and experiences and engagement and community activities. Uh, with what I suspect you're hearing in some of the other sessions today. And so our honors program is really dedicated to helping our honor students find that connection um, and the one that's right for them. So maybe you'll train a seeing eye puppy or you're gonna grow food right in the middle of our campus um, or you're gonna volunteer with some classmates to educate the community about an issue like climate science. But whatever that path is that you choose, you know, whether you're studying pre-med or animal science, environmental science, or public health, our SEBS General Honors Program is designed to help you follow your own path with a flexible approach to fit you and an amazing and, and supportive community that, that really comes around and, and helps you as you go through. Thanks. Okay, great, that's a great overview. And we will be delving in more into uh, both SEBS Honors and the Honors College um, in a few minutes. So um, to that end, uh, let me introduce, oh, let me go backwards or forward. There we go. Uh, let me introduce uh, Dean Lisa Sanin Jules, who is uh, one of the deans um, in charge of particularly advising and other administrative pieces at the Honors College. Thank you, Dean Trexler. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Honors College. In addition to having something as wonderful as the SEBS Honors Program, our Rutgers students are also offered the opportunity to be a part of the Honors College. So the Honors College has been around since 2015. We take in about 500 students per year. They're always invited in at the beginning of the first year. So just to tell you a little bit about it, we have students from all of the different schools and that's what makes us different than the individual honors programs. That's usually one of the most common questions. What's the difference? Is one better than the other? The answer is no, they're just different. Um, the SEBS honors program has all SEBS students, whereas the honors college will have students who are from SEBS, SAS, Mason Gross, RBS, engineering, et cetera. So it's a little different in that way. Um, when you're a part of the honors college, we are all combined with a core experience, which is our, our mission course. So we'll talk a little bit more later on if you have particular questions about the Honors College. I can tell you that one of the things that we have are faculty that live on campus. Um, and most important to me, we have our advising center, which is a part of our Honors College. So all of our offices are lo located there. So I'll be available at the end to answer any questions that you might have. Terrific, thanks so much for joining us today. Okay, let's uh, move on to our next thing that I know is on everyone's mind is scholarships. You know, paying for college has gotten more and more complicated. Um, and Dean Ventola is a very popular guest at every party for what he brings in terms of knowledge of uh, scholarships from SEBS. Dean Ventola? Yes, th thank you, Dean Traxler. I welcome all the students. Uh, we love to see you here in the next fall, next spring, or, or the following year. It's thank you for your interest in the school. It's a it really is a good school, small school within a large university. And thank you for coming. Um, just 
real quickly, and we'll open up to questions later, is scholarships could be broken down into three different areas. And first starts with outside scholarships. So at your school, the place you worship, where your parents work, where you work, you may see opportunities for outside scholarships. I recommend that you do do those. I don't recommend you send hundreds of outside scholarship applications in, but I recommend you do the ones that actually fit you. And believe it or not, a lot of students get those scholarships, $250, $500, or whatever the case. Also on our, I, I, I put on the SCBS website, a link for our scholarship page for SCBS, and you'll see information there for also outside scholarships at, at, at Rutgers or all, the, all, all around as well. And then finally, the last point for outside scholarships, I send a scholarship email and a, a few of those each semester to some outside scholarships that our SEB students have been successful in one. So those are another opportunity. The second part is incoming first year or incoming transfer scholarships. Uh, those are the biggies. And for me by that, they're, they're used typically, they are a four year commitment so a student may be offered $5,000, whatever it is, uh, by the admissions office who, who actually does the administration of those scholarships. And it will say if you stay at SAS or SEBS for four years and you receive a 3.25 or better, you'll continue to get those scholarships award for the four, four, four years. Um, and then finally, the last part of that is um, the enrolled student scholarships at SCBS. We have an open process. Students know about it. The faculty, staff know about it. Every spring, every February, they get, students get emails and we, we post the application uh, on, on the, the website to apply for the following year. So February 21, we're going to have scholarships available for 2021, 2022. We, we, we have basically one application. We do have a few little separate specialized applications, but for the most part, it's one application. Not all students, of course, are awarded these scholarships, but a good number of them are. And this could be areas to help supplement your, your financial aid and other areas to for your funding source. Typically, these scholarships are not the end all. They don't cover all your tuition, but they're a good supplement. And then finally, I would add by saying on the website, you're gonna see other things. You, the honors program, and I mentioned that, is that a lot of the students that are in the honor programs because they're doing so well do receive scholarships and then later as an honor student if they're juniors and seniors we do have a scholarship dedicated towards those and every year that's it depends upon the availability and then finally uh, you're, you're going to hear next a Heller House is also a scholarship opportunity for students. I think I'm a little bit over but I had to get it in. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No problem, and yes, as uh, Dean Mantola says, one of the uh, one of the um, exciting opportunities, uh, particularly for subs, is our Hellier House community. Um, so I want to welcome Henry Velasquez, uh, class of twenty two, who is our president of Hellier House, to talk a bit about that program. Thank you, thank you. Um, hi everyone. Uh, so Hellier House, uh, it's a it's an on campus dorm that's a um, cooperative living community. So that may sound strange, like what's, what is that? Um, so what that is, is it's this place where there's 40 of us and we all work together to cook for ourselves and clean for ourselves. So because we cook and clean for ourselves, uh, we have a discount on uh, costs. So we don't have a meal plan, so we save money there and we get a discounted housing for doing janitorial work. So um, not only that, it's like, it's like a nice, it's a beautiful family community um, where you, you bond really fast with everyone and you just, you grow this beautiful family that you just never want to leave. <laughs> and then it's, it's honestly one of the best experiences I've had in my whole life. And I'm sure Dan, Dan's here too. He's an alumni who was my roommate. Uh, I'm sure he can agree. And I'll pass it over to him now so that he can have some, some time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just want to reiterate what Henry said. Um, it is an amazing community. Uh, now being on the outside, um, I'm already missing it. Um, even though there is no one living there right now. Um, 
but I had the privilege of working on the e-board for two of my years there. Um, I was the food coordinator. So I uh, arranged all the food, the meals, what was being bought during the week, any events that um, were food coordinated, such as our Thanksgiving event, uh, which was a great big um, thank you to the, not only the Rutgers community, but to our families who have made this possible for us to go to college. Um, just reiterating some of the things that Henry said, um, we do have a, that upkeep of the house, but um, that is in compensation of us having um, the financial help to live on campus. Um, the hours never added up. I mean, Henry can agree with me, never more than two or three hours a week. Um, so it's very manageable with our busy uh, college times. Uh, the best part is it is only open to SEBS majors. So we're all sciencey nerdy in that regard. So that kind of ties into what Henry said and how we just bond so quickly. Um, as so many people that have gone through the halls of Hellier now that we've been open for, what are we coming on? 52, 52 years now. Yeah. Um, it, it's amazing every year to see how many people come back and relive their memories, bond with all their friends and faces they haven't seen in years. Um, and I've seen it now uh, since I've been out and um, being with people that have been out one, two, three, four years. It's it truly is an amazing community and an experience that you will never get anywhere else. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it is the only place like it in Rutgers and I think not only Rutgers, but the whole state. Um, so it is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I will say my college experience and my life would not be the same without this place. It is truly was a blessing to have been a, be able to be a part of this house. Great, thanks Henry and Dan. Hopefully oh, we'll have uh, some, oh. Oh, I just wanted to say a few, uh, like last last 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> so we have some cool programs too, like um, the agriculture program where we actually raise our own chickens and have our own greenhouse and stuff. And um, the upperclassmen always help the underclassmen with like classes they might've taken before. And um, yeah, it's all just really good time. That's we are finding a lot of students in terms of paying for college have to manage multiple uh, multiple things they need to put together scholarships financial aid opportunities like hell your house so hopefully um, you're all exploring um, options and all of those different options just a quick stop at the connect with us slide which I will go back to but I'm always happy to have you kind of take a quick picture of it because we are going to ask you to weigh in and and give us feedback on the session um, consider coming back and visiting with us sitting in on a virtual class, a mock class, um, following us on Instagram. But we are going to what we hope is the most critical part of, of our session today um, is questions. Um, we're happy to have you unmute and ask our panelists questions. We're also happy to have you um, put questions in the chat box. Um, our ambassadors are helping, um, helping us manage that. I'm going to take us back to the to the big grid square um, and see what kinds of questions you know please you know percolate questions you have for our panelists. Um, I will ask our ambassadors who have joined us. They've each um, been part of some of these different programs. If they could just weigh in quickly on the you know, best thing, best experience they had, whether it's being part of the honors program, the honors college, their scholarships here. Um, Vanessa, can I start with you? Of course. Uh, so I'm part of the Honors College. Actually, let me just give an introduction because since you do not know me, um, my name is Vanessa. I am a junior majoring in environmental and business economics with a minor in Chinese. And so as I mentioned, I'm part of the Honors College. Um, and as already said, we are a community of all these different majors um, in one dormitory. Um, and we have specific programs tendered to us as well as like different events for us to bond with each other. And I really enjoyed it since all my friends are actually in SAS um, and they are the people that I dormed with my first year and they're still friends, um, my friends till this day. So it's a really great opportunity to make that um, familial bond. And also talking along the financial aid aspect definitely helped me um, when I was applying to schools, I was applying as an out-of-state student. Um, and so I um, like had to, um, I lost my train of thought, one second. <laughs> um, so when I was applying to out-of-state, I had to really consider the financial needs. Um, and so I got to 
accepted to the Honors College and it was a great opportunity for me to be on campus and not have to worry too much about uh, the financial issues and also the continuing scholarships very, very helpful for me. Um, and another point, if you actually identify as a woman, there is the Douglas Residential College, which also helps continuing students with financial issues. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, let me ask uh, Lily, you want to weigh in, tell us what your kind of best experience has been? Yeah, so I can speak on behalf of the SEB scholarships. Um, and so the whole scholarship application process was facilitated by SEBS and I really only wrote one personal essay describing my time at Rutgers, you know, what I've been through, what courses I've taken, and it wasn't very hard to write at all because, you know, it's coming from your own experiences and really your passions in the field that you're studying. Um, and then I did end up receiving scholarships pertaining to my major. Um, one was specifically for seniors in environmental science, which I am. And then the other one was for just juniors or seniors kind of demonstrating interest in the environment. Um, and so that's just two that applied to environmental science, but there's ones for every other major and even more niche topics in there as well. So I encourage everyone to take the time to just apply and, you know, see what you can get. Sounds good. Uh, let me jump in with our other Daniel. I always end up with both Daniels on, on all of the, the talks I give. So uh, Daniel, tell us about your experience with the honors program. Yeah, so it's a great community. Um, one of the big things that I, coming to Rutgers, that I wanted to focus on was how do I make the large uh, community of Rutgers feel a little more at home? And one thing is applying through SEBS, you're definitely going to feel that right away. And I feel like personally, for me, the SEBS honors uh, program was kind of like almost like another kind of community within the community. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it, but to me, things that immediately come to mind are people you dorm with. Uh, I got great friends from uh, the experience. You get good research credit. So to graduate with honors, you need to have, I believe, around 11 research credits, but they give you advantages and opportunities to get that research, which is awesome. It really helped jump track my uh, uh, position on research and get a position here at Rutgers. Um, and in addition, there's always kind of small events, at least like once every two weeks, and usually it's free food, which is definitely my favorite part. So, you know, there's even if you just want to come by, get a slice of pizza and just talk to your deans, it's a great way to establish connection. Free pizza is always the way to a college student's heart, right? No matter through the generations, I think that's been true. Um, Billy, will you tell us about your experiences? Yep, I'm Billy. I'm a senior exercise science major and I'm in honors college. Um, I think I'll mention two important things. One, uh, being in the program or honors college within SEBS, you have a SEBS specific and also just general specific and other schools in Rutgers uh, honor seminars that uh, only we have like access to register for. And I actually took one with uh, Dr. Tulik, uh, mapping and making healthier communities. And uh, I actually got involved. It's a mapping course and it's like has nothing to do with my major. And I like enjoyed it so much. I took a, another like water resource that involved mapping as well. So I think things like that can get you in, can give you credits while like exploring different uh, areas of study. And also the Honors College has the, uh, who what we mentioned before, an advising team. And I actually have a SEB specific advisor for my honors college for honors college as well as my exercise science advisor and all the deans that can help and i really think that that uh i find it super easy to make appointments and just go to my honors college advisor because they are involved with sebs and my honors college requirements so i always love like being able to go in and going back to my freshman year dorm and just like jump in and asking any questions i could and i thought that was an awesome resource that not many have the option for with all the advising Absolutely. Katie, I'm going to jump to you and ask about your experience, but also we have a question about how rigorous are the classes and the honors seminar type classes. Maybe you can speak to that as well. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Katie. Um, I'm the SEBS ambassador and I'm also part of the SEBS honors program. Um, so one thing that I really liked about the honors program is that you actually are required to take a couple of courses for that. So um, you have to take one 
uh, two, two honor seminars, but one of them can be an SAS seminar and one is required to be a SEB seminar. Um, so I, I took, I'm taking one SAS seminar right now and I took a SEB seminar last semester. And I really like that you have the option to take one SAS um, seminar because they are a little bit more, um, more based on around some of the um, more broader topics that are offered by SAS um, because SEBS is quite small. Um, and so that is definitely a, a great opportunity to get a more diverse, well-rounded um, perspective in education. And as in terms of the um, how rigorous they are, I'd say they are um, pretty challenging, but they're also um, manageable in the sense that they are very discussion-based. Um, a lot of them are writing focused. So um, maybe that is a strong suit for some people and maybe that's not, um, I'm not sure. Uh, it depends on the person, but um, they are very small classes. So you definitely get to make connections with your classmates and the professor. Um, the two classes that I'm in right now, I don't believe that they were any larger than maybe like 25 students. So uh, definitely very open for uh, great discussions. So hopefully that answered your question. Absolutely. Well, that gives us some ideas. I should mention a number of the programs that we're featuring here today do find you if you uh, qualify for the honors program or the honors college or for certain types of, uh, of, of scholarship aid that you will be contacted. Uh, one of the nice things with Rutgers is when you apply, you're reviewed for a lot of different pieces. So you don't have to go out of your way to look for, uh, for all of them, but we certainly like you to be aware of some of the additional options like Hellier House, uh, like some of the scholarships once you're a continuing student. Um, so keep those things in mind. Um, maybe we could ask the, the students to weigh in on kind of why honors at Rutgers, what, uh, what brought you here, um, particularly if you came from out of state. Come on, Vanessa, you know I'm looking at you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, uh, I actually was not expecting to get accepted to the honors college. Um, like I knew about it, so I applied on time. Uh, but the actual notification was like, "Wow, okay." Um, so uh, many reasons. I did visit afterwards. I did visit the university itself and the Honors College. And it was then that I was completely won over by Rutgers. Um, so that is why I decided to actually join. Um, and again, the notion that they uh, want to emphasize in the Honors College is interdisciplinary. Um, being able to learn not only about your major, but also a lot of other things, including social issues as well. Um, so I really did appreciate that as well, um, being able to experience um, with everybody else all these different uh, opportunities and majors and programs um, so that you weren't only exclusive to what you were studying. Great. Um, we have a FAFSA question in the box. So Shiraz, I'm going to, and that one is Absolutely your territory. The question about the December 1st deadline for students, is that just students accepted to Rutgers or for perspectives? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So it's basically for anybody that's going to be starting Rutgers um, like next fall. So any incoming student at all, the deadline is December 1st. If you're a continuing student, so if you do come to Rutgers next fall then and you become a continuing student going, going forward, that deadline is January 15th. But that December 1st deadline is for all incoming students or who are prospective or have been accepted. Anybody whose first year is gonna be next fall. And when you do the FAFSA, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to come to Rutgers. You can list 10 schools on the FAFSA. Um, it's just that, that we will get your FAFSA information and we'll consider you for additional you know, grants possibly if you do decide to come here. If you don't, then that's okay too. You know, we know that students are having to get creative to figure out how to pay for college and pick lots of different pieces together. I just wondered if either De uh, Dean Mantola or maybe Lily might speak to that, you know, how to find scholarships, what kinds of things to take into uh, account when you're looking for, for all of the opportunities that will help with uh, paying for tuition. I, yeah, I think um, 
I think Lily said, I think it's good advice is I would recommend that you be uh, proactive. And I mean by that is that you, you'll get different announcements about different scholarships, whether it be outside or internally, you know, take a good look at them and, and, and you know, think it through reasonably to think that if this scholarship does fit you to apply. And then on top of that, I would just say uh, for the SCBS general scholarship uh, application, uh, the most important thing is to apply. And what we did was, and I think Lily mentioned it a little bit earlier, is it's not a difficult application. We did that on purpose to have it be student friendly. That application brings the availability for a lot of considerations for a lot of different scholarships. And I tell some students, oh, I didn't get anything or I got this or whatever. I said, every year is different. So you want to continue to reapply and put and submit that applications uh, for for possible funding. And some of our students do, you know, a good number of students do get a some award to help supplement their education. So, you know, be, be proactive, look in your communities as well. And, you know, you want to piece together as best you can your best package uh, to come to Rutgers. And one last thing about Rutgers, it's typically in Money Magazine being one of the top, uh, you know, uh, buys in, in the country. And it really is a good quality education for a very good, very good price. I had a question about honors opportunities. If you aren't admitted to say the honors college or the honors program initially, um, I'll ask those, those programs to weigh in, but I'll also mention that there's also other honors opportunities, um, particularly um, SEBS has a George H. Cook honors capstone project where students work on a senior year thesis. And that may be students from either the honors college or the honors program, but it is also students outside of those programs. So that if, if you don't come into one of our honors opportunities initially, you do still have some great opportunities to, to do honors work at uh, the university. Uh, David, do you wanna weigh in on joining honors later? And then I'll throw to Lisa. Yeah, well, I was, I, I was gonna stress what you said about the, the, the Cook honors thesis. It's such a great opportunity. Uh, but we do have a process where, where we do review students uh, after the first year. Um, and I have to admit, as incoming director, I haven't, I haven't done that one in detail yet, but I know that that's at least a, a quick review. It's still, they're still held to the, uh, the expectation of the, uh, maintaining a 3.4 GPA. Um, but we do, we do have an opportunity for that. Hey, Dean Tan and Jules, sorry. I lost you on my screen. There you are. Ah, no problem. So for the Honors College, we only have one opportunity to join, and that's at the beginning of the, fresh, the freshman year. Um, after that, we don't have any kind of a transfer process. But again, as you just heard, there are lots of other op honors opportunities. There's a large honors community in general at Rutgers University, which includes the honors programs, departmental honors, um, and other opportunities like the capstone. And there was another question about how rigorous the classes are. Um, so I think the classes are rigorous, but I think that would be a question that the students could probably answer best from their perspective. Billy, you wanna weigh in? Yeah, yeah, I can jump in. Um, I think the, the honors program and uh, honors college classes, so being in either of those programs, we, we all take them together. Um, and I think it's, less so not scary, but more so a, more of like a, my, my, both of my seminars were no more than I would have 12 to 15 students. And uh, I thought it was, some of them are larger, but I had the, I had luckily the 10, 15 students, we all knew each other's name. And I think they're uh, much more project based and working like as a team and you'll get grouped up and uh, a lot more presentations and a lot more uh, interaction and talking and you're close with the professor. And it, it, it's almost more laid back in like the communication sense versus a larger class when you're, you don't, might not wanna talk, but we have like, we'll have assigned readings and discussions during class. So I think it's, it's less a matter of it being harder and more than it is being more interactive. So I think if, if you are that involved, it, you could make it easier for yourself. And I think it's, a, it's more so based on the, what they talk about is the experiential learning. So we do a lot of like experiential activities within those. 
So I wouldn't be too intimidated that it is an honors course rather than more so an opportunity as an honor student to have a smaller class and, and have a relationship with the prof professor. Thanks, that's a great way to think about it. Any of our other um, honors opportunity? Yeah. Please, um, Vanessa. Yeah, also for the honors college, a good thing to keep in mind is that it's very different across the board. So for example, an SCVS student has a different requirement set from an SAS student. And you can kind of compare to see which one you think would be harder. For example, for our program, um, we don't need to take a language requirement while SES does, but then we have to a uh, research requirement. And if you are already planning and in being involved in research, then it's two birds in one stone. So um, it's also seeing which one works for you. I mean, um, if the school, you have to kind of get chosen by the school in the first place uh, to be in the honors college. Um, but if you're worried about that, um, just remember that everyone has a different uh, program to follow. So not making those comparisons um, because one part might be easier for you. All right, we would very much like your questions. Um, we have a nice assortment of people to weigh in on things. Oh, great, thank you, Kate. Um, how many students are accepted into the honors program each year? David, can I throw that to you? Um, yeah, the SCBS general honors program, well, the number accepted is larger, of course, because it's, it's, a, you know, it's got to do with how many come as well. So our goal right now for the start of each new year is a, a class of 50, uh, uh, 50 entering freshmen. Other, um, let me, while we're seeing if there are other kind of pressing questions, I'm going to share the screen again to remind you one more time of how to connect with us um, and that there are multiple opportunities after this to come join us for a virtual class. Uh, we would very much like your input on the program today. So um, use the Q, uh, QR code to potentially win prizes by sharing your feedback with us. And we also are happy to have you follow up after today's program to um, again get any of your class, any of your questions answered, really understand your opportunities with us. So I always encourage students to take a picture of the screen, a screenshot so that you have the ability to follow up with us. And Dean Smith is putting those links in our chat as well. I think I can, I'm on a strict schedule, but I think I can take one more question. And again, you're welcome to unmute and ask us the question or type it in the chat box. And please uh, follow us on Instagram to stay connected. Um, we have some really fun takeovers. Lily took us with her to a, uh, to a um, but Big Ten swim meet um, and showed us what it's like to be a, an NCAA athlete in college a while back. Hopefully when we can do that again, when she can, she can compete, we'll, uh, we'll ask her to do that for us again. Yeah, they're actually still planning on having big tens this year. So it will definitely look very different. So <laughs> I'd be willing to share the whole experience. That would be great. I think again, we're all very much looking forward to being back on campus. We hope we'll have an opportunity to welcome all of you to campus to visit us and uh, learn more about our community. Uh, we know that there's a place at SEBS and at Rutgers for um, so many students that it's been a great experience, I think, for a lot of our students here as well, who are spending their Saturday morning virtually with us. Um, but we look forward to a time when we can welcome you all to campus to get to, to see Hellier House, to get to really and see what our community is like. I will give one more shout out for one final question and then Dean Smith will have me moving us along to our next sessions. I think somebody asked about the honors college. If they don't get into the first year, can I reapply the following years? There's a question in the chat. Think, yeah, Can you um, answer that? Yeah, Dean Sen and Jill said uh, let students know that that wouldn't be an option, but there okay. are other good okay. honors awesome. options. So. Okay. 
Great. Well, I will thank you all for joining with us today. We know it's a nice day out, so we know staying on Zoom isn't always everyone's favorite idea these days, but uh, we appreciate you joining us. We hope you'll follow up with us if you have any more questions as you go through this journey. The college application journey is a long and often up and down and weird one, uh, but uh, we very much would love to welcome you to our community. Um, and so... Dean Smith, shall I, uh, shall I put in a plug for, we have one more set of academic sessions starting at 1215. So if you joined us earlier, um, this is a great time to explore our majors, get to meet our faculty and more of our student ambassadors. And then later in our day, um, you know, those of us, uh, the talking heads of the faculty and staff will be giving, taking a back seat to our students who will tell you much more about their experiences, student clubs and organizations, and really that exciting uh, campus community um, that we are so proud of. All right. Thanks very much. And thanks again to our panelists. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs>